Spirit draw us closer to our Lord. That we might give Him the glory in all of the honor. Amen. Amen. As we come today, we have a word from the Gospel according to Luke. It's 15th chapter. Many of you know these verses very well. Luke 15, and I'd like to read just a portion, verses 11 through 13. This is the word of God for his people. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. We'd like to share with you today a sermon topic, the tragedy of wasted substance. Pray with me. Father God, I stretch my hand to thee. For there is no other help I can. Lord, if thou withdraw thyself from me, oh, wherever shall I go? As we stand before your presence, Lord, we thank you for your spirit being in this place. Lord, the way that you cause hearts and minds to be moved so that they can clap their hands and sing the songs of Zion, pat their feet and feel a joy inside of them, and knowing that you are real, and that you are in the midst of your people. I pray that you purge me now with your Holy Spirit, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I'll be whiter than snow. That the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. 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 The tragedy of wasted substance. My brothers and sisters, if there is any indictment, against the character of our text, you'll find it in this 13th verse. For the Bible clearly said, he wasted his substance with riotous living. We have a report of wasted substance. And what a sin it is for the Father to give us of his substance. And after we get it, waste it. The young man in question in our text had approached his father early and said, Father, give me, give me, give me my share, the portion which falls to me. He made a big deal out of give me. Some of us know something about that, but we've heard so many times from so many. To have done absolutely nothing constructive with it once he received. In that far country, we have a report of riotous living and wasted substance. Whatever you do, don't waste your substance. Our today's text today is a series of parables. Short stories that were told by Jesus, the master teacher. And he told a series of stories on this occasion, one successively behind the other. And I think I ought to tell you the reasons why our Lord told these stories. You see, there had been some murmuring. There had been some criticism and complaints 
on the part of the Pharisees. And this critical group saw every opportunity to find fault with the Lord who had raised the point of interest earlier. In an effort to get across an important message, and to convey an important fact, the Lord uses a series of parables. And each of the parables tend to convey the message that God not only loves those who are saved, but he also loves those who are lost. Amen, church. Amen, amen. While we were yet dead in our sins, the Bible tells us that Jesus died for us. If that isn't an act of love, I don't know what he is. In each of these parables, three to be exact, either something or someone is lost. All three stories tell us about something that originated the opening of the story being lost. But thanks be to God, before the stories close, before they end, that which started out lost ended up found. And that's a good way for all of our stories to end. Have I had a witness in here? Amen. Amen. We were once lost, but we can thank God when we come to our senses and accept Jesus and be saved. All of our stories began with us lost. I don't know about you, but when I got here, when I finally got sense enough to know it, I was already lost. I was born lost. You were born lost. We can thank God today that we're here. Have I got a witness? Yes. Amen. I'm glad to report to you today, though my story started out with me lost, it won't end with me lost. Amen. Because I fixed it up with Jesus. And I can say I'm saved. Have I got any witnesses in the are saved. Amen. He gives us faith. And we have to take that faith and stand on that faith and trust in God's ability to do what He or God can do. Amen. He gives us the ability to walk in the way of salvation. We've got to get our salvation into our spirit. Can I get another one? Amen. We've got to get it into our heads. We've got to get it into our spirit. Without doubt. Without apprehension. But we've got to tell ourselves that we are saved. Because God has made every provision for us to be saved. Amen. 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 You don't want to spend all your time and, and come into this place and sit on these pews not realizing what God has done through His Son. Amen. And not be sure of your salvation. Amen. Amen. That's why we constantly talk about the importance of Bible study. Because in our study of God's Word, God is going to speak to us. What God is saying. Amen. When we hear that word, there will be some changes that will take place in our lives. Amen. 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 One of the hardest things in the world for Christians, and that is to change. Amen. But unless we change, we may hear the Lord say, Depart from me. Because I know you not. We talk about this thing of relationship. Amen. We've got to know him. As well as he knowing us. We come to know him when we walk with him. When we talk with him. shape and change and transform us Amen. into the person that 
he wants us to be. Amen. Amen. We will thank God today. For he is real. Jesus tells these stories. And he told them in the form of parables. The first parable is about a sheep that was lost and later found. In the second parable, a coin of silver was lost. But the story ends with that coin being found. The third parable, the parable of our text today, speaks not about a lost sheep, nor a lost coin. Not about lost property. Not about lost finances. But rather about a lost soul. Souls ought to take priority with us as it does with God. Oh, yeah. Can I get another witness? Oh, yeah. Tell you, don't 
do. Possibly bored at his father's house. There was a certain attraction in the far country. The bright light seemed to beckon him. He seemed to be lured by the far country. The grass over there no doubt appeared green. You know it always looks like it's greener oh, yeah. in a far country. Yeah. Can I get a witness here? Some of the old timers would put it this way, he carried on some scandals in that far country. His conduct was rowdy in that far country. Over there, he could let his hair down. He didn't have the authority of his parents to report to. The eyes of his parents were not upon him in that far country. Out there, he was on his own, and he could do his own thing. I submit to you today that the word got out in that far country. There's a new man in town. He's young, and he has plenty of money. Those in the far country could no doubt immediately pick up the fact and discern that he had absolutely no experience. I tell you, folk in the far country gravitated to that young man like flies to overwrite fruit. They were all around. He was the first to be invited to the social gatherings. He was the man about town. When he was not attending big shindigs, he was sponsoring his own party. He was quite popular in that far country. Right. That young man was surrounded by friends, but not true friends. Mm. Only so-called friends. Yeah. Who were only there as opportunities to get what they could get oh, yeah. while the getting was good. Yeah. Now I think I ought to tell you today that most folk don't have any problems attracting folk when you are paid for. Amen. Have I got a witness here? Amen. 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 You're the one who's paid. There's no problem in gathering a crowd. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But there in that far country, he could go out when he got ready, stay as late as he wanted to, and could come home whenever he got ready without having to report to his father. But I want to say to the young people who are here today, if you're blessed to have parents or a parent who truly cares about you and who truly want to set ground rules that guard your life, I'm here to tell you today, count your blessings. Count your blessings, young people. Oh, yeah. Appreciate your mother and father. Yes. I've been blessed to travel in many of the major cities across this country and most urban and inner city areas. One can see teenagers and even younger young people standing on the streets. No matter what time of day or night it might be, making it the best way they can. If you got a roof over your head right. and a bed to sleep in at night and care to buy you some clothes and have good food on the table, you ought to count your blessings. The indictment here is that he wasted his substance. That sticks out of the text like a neon light. He wasted his substance. 
when the Father is gracious enough to give you some substance. Be wise enough to use it properly. It was tragic how his substance was wasted. It was tragic because it went to accomplish nothing worthwhile. His substance here is basically his resources, his wealth, his finances, all of which was wasted in a fashion that gave his father no glory. All of us can take this message home to our address today. Amen. For our substance may not be necessarily great wealth in the case of this young boy, but life itself is substance. Can I get a witness here? God has given all of us a purpose in life. God has given all of us a gift and talent. Oh, yeah. From our inception and birth, God has given you and me some substance. Something for the building of his kingdom. The question is, are you wasting your substance? We're not here to just eat, sleep, and watch others go about doing many things for the Lord. Amen. But if you are not using the substance that the Lord has given you for his glory, yes. you're wasting your substance. Yes. Our talents and abilities are God-given substance. Everything that we have, the Father has given it to us. Yes. No one should have to beg him. Plead with you to use your substance to glorify God. Right. Can I get a witness in here? Yeah. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. Uh, All too often church folk will sit. They will sit. Mm -hmm. And they will sit. Mm -hmm. And they will sit some more. Yes. Waiting for somebody to come and give them something to do. But I come to tell you, God has given all of us something to do. Amen. The person that you're expecting to come may never come. But there's always something to do. The Lord has given you a voice to sing. You ought to be singing. The Lord has given you the ability to serve and to be an usher or to be in the food ministry, missions, or whatever it is that builds up the church. You ought to avail yourself Amen. to that ministry. Oh, yeah. All too often, unless we're asked to be president or chairman of something, yeah. we don't want to follow anybody else. <laughs>
and being a distraction and not getting your lesson, no matter how hard it is, there will come a time of war. You've got to learn to work hard and be responsible while you're young. Amen, church. Yeah. Later in life, you will quit. But it may be too late to go back. You will wish you had studied hard. You will wish you had stayed in school and reached out for help in the hard place. Because later on, you will want a good job. You will want a nice place to live in. You will want many of the nice things that others enjoy. Oh, yeah. But I come to tell you that jails and prisons and even the graveyards are filling up with young folk who are placing their heart in and using drugs that destroy their intelligence, their motivation, their sense of responsibility, their respect for authority. Some things lost in riotous living. Amen. 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 The young person or old person that floods their bodies with drugs and their mind is cooked and fried and, and, and the intelligence, the gifts, the talents that God has given you, all of a sudden you come to a reckoning and nothing is there. That's one of the results of riotous living. That young man was broke and in a far country. It's bad enough to be broke at home where mom and dad and grandma and grandpa can do what they can to help out. But to be in a far country and be broke is unimaginable. The record tells us no man gave under him. No man. And he found himself in want. That young man found himself wandering the streets in that far country. And after all the money had been spent, he no doubt sold everything remaining of his possessions just to eat. He walked the streets looking for employment. And all he could find in terms of work was a job working for a Gentile, feeding a Gentile swine. Somebody may say, where does it say Gentile swine in the text? Well, it says it when it said that he was working for a man who had homes. And that tells me if he had swine, he wasn't a Jew. Because Jews had nothing to do with swine. I need to tell you today, be careful how you treat everybody. Amen. Have I got another witness in here? You don't know who you're going to need before you leave this world. Amen, church. Be careful how you treat that little old lady down at the store who is holding up the line because she can't find something in the bottom of her pocketbook. Be careful how you treat that little old man who doesn't look dressed and smell the way that you think people ought to. Because God sees and remembers everything in the affairs of mankind. Be careful, because what you throw out will ultimately come back to you. That young man found himself in a far country, broke and in want, because he had wasted his substance. His once princely robes had become frayed and ragged. Staying with the slop as he goes back and forth to slop the pigs. 
Scripture informs us that one day the boy, as he sat down, he watched the swine as they ate. He watches the hogs and hunger pains shot through his body. He sits there watching the hogs gorge themselves. And he is so hungry that he wants to eat with the hogs. The slop and the husk of the hogs began to look attractive. So much so until he would have joined them in to eat with the pigs. As he watches the homes gorge themselves, his mind takes him back to his father's house. And he recalls that in his father's house, the table was always ready. The young man said to himself, I'm going to get up and I'm going to go home. Isn't God good? Yeah. 
And he has made me glad. Amen. I'm glad that I can testify today oh, yeah. that I know a man from Galilee. And if you are in sin, he's able to set you free. Yeah. I wonder, do you know him? He's the son of David. He's the seed of Abraham. Yes. The stone hewn out of a mountain. Yeah. He is the Messiah. Yeah. The one that the prophets spoke about. He is the son of God. Yes. He is my savior. Oh, yeah. And the Lord of my life. Oh, yeah. I wonder, do you know him? Yeah. Do you know Jesus? Oh, yeah. oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. In all of our lives. Yes. May God bless you today. Yes. Uh,